All right. Hello, everyone. I hope that you are hearing me. This is Gustavo Tolosa from Dallas, Texas. And I just want to make sure that you all can see us. Welcome, everyone. And uh, we are having a, um, a special day today where we'll visit about several topics and about the 10 day program, living program Dr. Martugo has. And uh, then I will let you all know what new uh, webinar series we're starting next week. And um, I just want to welcome our beloved Dr. McDougall, who is having a lot of fun with his grandkids. And um, he is ready to go. So how are you doing, Dr. McDougall? Uh, <clears throat> I couldn't be better to say I'm having fun with grandkids. <laughs> uh, five of the seven. And uh, probably more relaxed than you usually expect to see me. Uh, but I am having a good time, and and uh, Mary just peeked her head in to make sure everything was fine. But yeah, we're we're having a good time. Our, our oldest is thirteen that we have with us now, and the youngest is two. And uh, Mary and I have been having a good time with these five. <clears throat> our uh, responsibility yesterday was taking care of the two-year-old, and our responsibility tomorrow will be the two-year-old also. But uh, yeah, oh. And I see a little beard on your face. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I don't have a shirt to tie on it. Right, well, you're relaxing. This is it's great because when you get back to Santa Rosa, it's back to activity, right? All right, let's see. We're starting a 10-day program a week from tomorrow. And uh, then I have to be, uh, you know, regular doctors kind of thinking. Probably have about 40 people, maybe 50 coming. And Dr. Lim and I. Uh, we'll be taking care of these 50 people. So, yeah, I have to be ba back on my game uh, as of next Friday. It will come with breast cancer and rheumatoid arthritis, overweight, and some healthy people who just want to stay healthy. Uh, generally, let's see, I think the average age is about 50, maybe. We have people as young as 18 and as old as 90. But generally, they're people who are – Enjoying life, enjoying their families, but uh, they realize that things are not going well. They're, they're carrying around a bag full of drugs, and and their future uh, looks dim. You know, they, 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 I, I can only, you know, as, uh, again, I, most of you know, as I'll be seventy and in about uh, two and a half months. Uh, I, I can just imagine what. Uh, <clears throat> Many 70 year olds feel like in terms of uh, what the future is going to be because they don't feel well. You know, they're taking pills. They got doctor's appointments scheduled. Uh, they're looking for heart surgery and uh, some way to, some way to fix their problem. Uh, fortunately, Mary and I, Mary's going to be 71 actually, a month and a half. But uh, did you see the, did you see the, the piece that came out today? on planning meals that Mary did? Yeah, I did it. I saw the piece. Very, very good. I think everybody else should have gotten it in their email box. Oh, well, if they didn't, they can go to the website and somewhere or another, it's, oh, well, I know where they can find it. They go under uh, right. education and then they go under videos. And then there's the, um, the video Mary did uh, well, probably 10 days ago at the advanced study weekend. <clears throat> there are a couple of impressions that people get. And I'm only guessing. Uh, the first impression I get when I see her is, uh, you know, how lucky I am and uh, to have a healthy uh, friend and partner in life. Uh, and there's so much to learn. You'll want to watch that planning meals video 5, 10, 15, 20 times. Show it to your friends and relatives. I've had comments. You were at the advanced study weekend. And people have commented to me, uh, why should I pay to watch the whole weekend when I can get uh, some of the videos free. Well, so don't why pay to watch the whole weekend. Uh, Mary and I have an obligation uh, to share with you the things we know. And so some of the videos that we do, in fact, pretty much everything Mary and I do, we give away free. Like I talked about the sugar feed cancer and uh, let's see uh, about chocolate milk, which is disease in disguise. And I talked about Henry Heimlich and then I did a whole rip on the diabetic industry, which, by the way, uh, you all should be showing to all your physicians and dietitians and 
Friends Who Have Diabetes, it's a free video. And then Mary did two videos, which, uh, you know, were very important to me and, and now, of course, very important to her since they're done. Uh, one on planning meals. Again, you should, you should be watching it. When you're trying to get into this program. You should plan a, a daily watch of that video, planning meals. And then there's also one on eating out that uh, we put up. So we put up four hours of videos of ours for free. You can do anything you want with them. You can send them to all your friends and relatives and encourage you to do it. <clears throat> so why should you pay for the weekend? Well, that's four hours out of, uh, I didn't count, but maybe 20, maybe 20 hours of the weekend. Some pretty amazing speakers during that weekend, weren't they, Kisabo? They were. It was one of the best weekends. and um, It was the best advanced study weekend. We ever well, I've been to several, and I just can't, you know, everyone I go to is like, okay, that was the best. And then I go to the next one. Oh, that was the best. So it's uh, you always do, yeah, put together a great weekend for us. I wanted to, uh, Dr. McDougall, take, take just a minute here and just show people because it seems as they should. And, um, you know, they can go to right here to the videos. And gosh, you have hundreds and hundreds of videos and they're all uh, listed by topic. And uh, this I love, you know, someone was asking about uh, coffee a few minutes ago and you put coffee there and there you have everything that you have written or uh, videos that you have done about coffee, but you can type anything you want in that box there. And um, I just want people to know because this is such a great tool, the search um, feature there. And since you were talking about the 10 day program, here's the 10 day program. And I love this video that you have here that people can watch. I also think it's great that people can see a sample schedule of what the weekend looks like. I mean, not the weekend, the whole 10 days. And um, anyway, I just want to encourage people to please go and spend a good amount of time on this website that Dr. McDougall has created for us with the help of his team, because it's an amazing uh, source of information. Anyway, thank you for, for letting me do that, Dr. McDougall. I think that uh, we should all go to that website more often. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Gustavo. I sent you an article uh, earlier that people should also go to. I sent you an article like about an hour ago about uh, about doctors and the medical system. Is yes. there any way I have that. Do you want me to show it? Well, in some way I want people to see it. It's a discussion about uh, the, the criminal behavior of the medical business in terms of uh, patients and uh, the heart surgery. This is this is a bad day for the cardiologist. Uh, this particular article when it came out, there it is. And uh, yeah, when the evidence says no, the doctors say yes. So you you all should read it. Uh, you should share it with friends and relatives. I have nothing to do with this article, except that I want you to be aware of it. And it talks to you about the things that I've been trying to talk to you about for forty years. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, no other way to describe it. It's criminal behavior on the part. I don't know. What are they going to do when this news gets out? Drive taxis? Again, don't, don't, uh, don't think I'm overgeneralizing. There are some very important things in the medical business. There are some doctors who have not lost their moral compass. But uh, this article has been sent to me <clears throat> by half a dozen people over the last day and said, well, you know, Finally, somebody else is talking about the things that you've been trying to help us with for the last 40 years. Anyway, we, we want them to know about that article. And I, I'm sure you'll put that up on the webinar so people can can share it. Share it with as many people as you can. Uh, you know, I, I read on the Internet, and I think this is uh, um, true, but I haven't spend a lot of time checking it. Did you read about the prime minister of Germany uh, banning all meat products from um, any government functions? 
No. Okay. I think it's I think it's true. Um I guess I've seen it several times. So if it is true, then hats off to Germany. Well, and uh, Yeah, I mean so, somebody is aware not only of the harm to people, but uh, to the planet. The planet, right. And that's probably uh her uh at least one of her motivations, so she's Prime Minister of Germany. <clears throat> yeah, that, uh, the news is out, and uh, people are catching up. But there was something else I saw on here. I'm here just relaxing with the grandkids. But they had a TV show on, and they had a Weight Watchers commercial on. Oh. And the commercial, if uh, and I don't mind being corrected if I've got something wrong, Weight Watchers. But it was something to the effect that uh, uh, the consumer must respect the temple, and that this is a, a disrespect to God to not – I guess enroll in Weight Watchers. So, uh, you know, some of the, the weight losing businesses are getting down and dirty. They will hit you below the belt and they will tell you you are a sinner. That's and, right. Uh, and in God. <laughs> uh, exactly. Well, okay, fine. And maybe the answer for some of you is to join Weight Watchers. But I, if there is a God and if uh, this is what you believe, then my guess he or she would say, the offense is you eating animals, my, my, my giraffes and my elephants and my cows and pigs. And the way to correct this sinning would be to eat what I gave you in terms of rice and corn and potatoes. Just guessing. I, I'm welcome to have uh, any comments unless, uh, unless they're emotional. I think that's a good guess that you're making, actually. Yeah. And you know, the lecture that you gave this past Sunday at the Healthy Taste of uh, Sacramento was like one of the, I, I haven't seen you do a lecture like that before. Uh, it was, you know, you didn't have your slides or a specific topic. Well, it was a specific topic actually, um, but I really enjoyed it. Can you just Summarize in a few words of what you said to all those, like about three or four hundred people there. Well, I could if I could remember, but I, but first, before I try and remember, I want them to know and this has nothing to do with me. Uh, but uh, Gustavo, you and AJ have a link to that weekend that people can go and purchase uh, Garth Davis and Doug Lyle and uh, the chef, Iron Chef, and Dr. Craig McDougall, and uh, you, you can you can purchase this whole weekend for a reasonable price, and uh, you, you'll you'll let them have the link to that. But no, I I just uh, I was there on Sunday, and uh, AJ Chef AJ, many of you know, she says she didn't say this to me, but uh, this is what I heard, and it doesn't matter that you can't show any slides, and uh, uh, you must talk, you must say something new. I, yeah, I had an awful lot of fun. There were probably 300 people there, and the audience allowed me to relax and just kind of talk about what I wanted to talk about. And for an hour and 15 minutes, uh, I think that our rapport between myself and the audience was uh, unique and very much appreciated from my point of view. I, ho I hope everybody that watched <clears throat> live, because you can't get the same thing on videos live, almost, and you're going to tell them how to get it. Uh, yeah. It was an amazing experience for all of us. But what I, what I think what I said, something to the effect that the world is worth saving, and right now we can save it. You know, right now, uh, there, there is a planet that's livable by 7 billion people. Uh, there are things that are going to change. And uh, you, you can't hesitate, uh, but I asked the audience and all of you, you can't, we can't hesitate in terms of uh, fixing things. It's not like we'll put it off until next year. And one of the major things that we must fix is the food. I've talked about that a lot. We've got to stop making the primary source of calories animals. And instead, I'm talking about fish too. And instead we have to turn uh, back to the traditional human diet, which is starch-based, potatoes, rice, corn, and so on. And the audience was, uh, at least from my seeing eyes and listening ears, they were uh, very much engaged with the same kind of thinking, including the minister, John, where well, this was done in the church. It just happened to be done in the church. 
uh, everybody seemed to be uh, thinking the same things. Uh, so it was, it was a great experience. I thank you, Gustavo, and I thank uh, AJ and Linda Middlesworth. And, you know, if I started naming names, somebody would say, well, you forgot me. I was really, yeah, I, I, I thank everybody for the opportunity. Well, you encouraged us with a lot of passion to really start taking more uh, the initiative to to get the message out there. And and we when Dr. Maltuga and when I say to all of you to uh, to please help us, we really mean it. Help us by talking to people, forwarding these all these to this information in your social media. And, and you did a great job because you did engage the, the audience. They all spoke and it was like a town hall meeting kind of thing. <laughs> well, I, I, look at, I look at other, uh, you know, uh, just to say the least, as I get older, my eyes get wider open. And I look at other people who have passion. And I, again, I don't want to name any names because I'd be comparing myself with great people. Uh, well, I, uh, I'm inspired by and aspire to be like. Yeah, but I, uh, this is important. Uh, if you can lead, you must lead. And uh, I try to do that. I try to do that. And I'm sure I shocked Andrew Taylor, that spud guy, when he asked me to do a little bit of, of uh, live discussion for his website. And I just said to Andrew, as uh, many of you heard me say, Offended or not, I don't care. Uh, we must stop the liars, polluters, and cheaters. Uh, that's all there is, and and that's not only because of my life, which has already been pretty much lived, uh, and Mary's, but our children and grandchildren. And I, I think that was the essence of the discussion, and I don't think there's a person out there that degree, disagrees whether they're uh, Republican or or Trumpish or Democratic or whatever you are, is that. Uh, the world's worth saving. Uh, we have some uh, important ways to do it. But anyway, it, that that's history. Yeah. Just have you give them the link. I can never repeat what I said, nor by some Craig McDougall or Garth Davidus or Chef AJ or what you put into it. So I'm well, sorry, I'm not to relive that. It was great to see all these young professionals like your son and Garth Davis and uh, Rosanna Oliveira, uh, these young doctors that are going to, you know, take the torch and, and continue. Your son did an, an amazing job talking about the transition to a plant-based diet. And um, I've heard him talk three or four times now, and I must say that every time he gets better. Yeah. So it's wonderful. Very good. Well, you also said that once we know the truth, if we don't do anything about it. That's just not acceptable. No, it's it's not acceptable. Those who know must they, they have a, we have we have a duty to do. We do. But let's let's get back to the ten day program again. You're going to get in the link so they can watch you. Yes. And, uh, and then we get to some questions. Uh, we do start a ten day program a week from tomorrow, and we're very excited about all the people that are going to be there and all of you who still want to come which will be March 6th, I think we start. March 6th, whatever Friday is, March 6th, 2017. Close enough, and you can talk to Carol. But that's when I get to be the, uh, the best person I can be, Gustavo. I get to uh, touch people and uh, help them with their troubles. Uh, and so I look very much forward to it. And uh, again, we will have people with problems as, as, as little as being healthy and want to have a future that's different than their parents or grandparents. Uh, they will want to get off their blood pressure pills or their diabetic pills. And by the way, <clears throat> all this information is free, particularly when it comes to the diabetic industry. It's free as a video on my website, uh, the, the scams of the diabetic industry. And by the way, I've had nobody come back to me, nobody from uh, uh, Smith, Klein, and Glaxo, the drug company. Uh, no doctors, no dietitians, no pharmacists come back to me and say, well, you misrepresented the science in your January 2017 newsletter, or you misrepresented uh, what's going on in, in your uh, video, which is free on the website. So, uh, yeah, what, what will happen next Friday is 
people will come in with uh, various uh, forms of diabetes, diabetes, various degrees from type one, full type two. And Dr. Lim and I will minimize, which if it's type two means take you off all your diabetic medications, insulin and pills. If you're type one, we'll reduce your dose of insulin and uh, get you to understand what's going on a little bit. And if you're in between, we'll make judgments. Uh, so that'll happen a week from Friday. We'll also be taking most people off their blood pressure medications. If not off completely by the end of uh, 10 days, we'll be putting you on the safest blood pressure medications. Uh, but I guess most importantly, we'll be giving you control of your health so you don't have to wonder why you're sick or how you feel well. And we're going to do that. And that's, that's why the 10-day program is most fun for me, is that people give me that privilege. Yeah. I remember uh, what you just said. <laughs> I, I guess there is uh, one of your grandkids there, right? Yeah. Do you, do you want to be part of the webinar? Plain. She told somebody yesterday when uh, she was asked about her eating, she says, uh, I'm allergic to eating animals. <laughs> and actually, the person who asked that question had to call her mom and ask what she meant. She was very clear. She very says, clear. I do not eat animals. I'm allergic to eating animals. Anyway, uh, from a four and a half year old's mouth. Well, a lot of kids and adults don't make the connection that that package that they're buying at the grocery store was actually an animal. I mean, believe it or not, the industry has done a great job taking away all the image and the suffering, and we just see that little box. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that some people <laughs> need an explanation. <laughs> well, so people are getting anxious about questions here. How about if we do some questions? Okay, so... Um, Actually, this question is about the 10-day program. Uh, do you have to be sick or can anyone attend the program? And part two, what tests are included? EKG, blood panels, thyroid, the basic CBC, A1C, et cetera, or, well, anyway, you well, can explain. As far as the question of do you have to be sick, uh, everybody eating the Western diet is sick. Uh, you're, uh, you can call that sickness various things as simple as constipation and hemorrhoids or indigestion or as complex as 80 to 90 to 100 percent closure of many of your coronary arteries or cancer in your breast or colon. So uh, the program is generally uh, designed for human beings who are not doing well. And it's not that you can't get the program for free. The program is free on the website. Uh, however, we have, <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I, would I be fair to say, Gustavo, we have the most uh, uh, effective, uh, intelligent, caring staff uh, of, of any place that I've ever met. It is, yeah. So, well, the program involves you getting involved with uh with our friends and staff and helping you get over all kinds of hurdles like stopping your medications. Who's gonna stop your medicine? What other doctors gonna stop your medicine when it's necessary? What other doctors are gonna tell you to not go see the heart surgeon? Which by the way, I refer back to that article I discussed a few minutes ago. Uh, it's, it's really hard to find the medical help that you deserve and are looking for. It's not that it's not out there and uh, so, so we provide that in the 10-day program. I think that's the most important thing is that our team is willing to do the right thing for you. As far as testing, we take some blood tests the first morning. Uh, if you need other types of outside testing, like say you need an EKG or an angiogram, we have many doctors in the community who can do that. However, we don't, that's not part of our business. You, people usually have that done when they're home. They bring the records. Uh, we don't do any fancy testing because it's not necessary. Uh, we do repeat blood tests at the end of the program. We weigh a couple of times. Uh, you adjust within, I, I tell people they come on Friday. 
and they won't get it until Tuesday. And so over the next uh, few days, they see uh, Dr. Lim and myself, and uh, they have their medications reduced and stopped in most cases, not all, but in most cases, they have them reduced or stopped. They have to get adjusted to that whole idea that they're not on a bag full of drugs. You know, those are, have been their best friends for a long time. And uh, many of them are very, very, very dependent upon them. But after, uh, you know, their medications on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday are reduced or stopped, they go, whoa, I'm still alive. Of course, yeah. And, um, and they kind of find their way around the resort. Uh, they start to like the food. One interesting thing is by... Tuesday or Wednesday, no matter what arrangement we make of the menu, we can completely, we can, we can change it every time. And by Tuesday or Wednesday, people will look at uh, Mary, Heather, I, Tiffany, and the rest of the staff and say, why didn't you serve that the first day when we came? This was really good. <laughs> you know, it just takes you a little time to adjust. And so they love the food by Tuesday. They love being off their drugs. They love feeling good. Oh, did you, by the way, feeling good, Gustavo, do you have any way to refer to that video that was put out uh, about, uh, and this is public knowledge, so I would never violate any HIPAA issue for privacy issues. But this was put out publicly, and I'll make uh, sure you get it if you haven't seen it yet, from one of our very recent patients who was herself a physician who had been to two hospitals in Los Angeles uh, major hospitals, major universities, who was, uh, well, she still diabetic, overweight, had such severe coronary artery disease that both hospitals threatened her. I don't mean just ask her, recommended, but threatened her to have heart surgery. And her and her daughter came to the program. Recently, I'm not going to identify the program, even though it's public knowledge. Came to the program on uh, lots of insulin, lots of diabetic pills, lots of everything, with no hope. And her daughter happened to be a uh, producer and uh, of, a, of television, and they put together this amazing video which involved her, the patient, mom, sick with diabetes, terrible coronary artery disease, and daughter, and a couple of nutritional experts, and a couple other people. So there's seven people on stage, white background, and I'll, I'll send you the link to it, where they talked about the experience. Uh, they were very frightened about coming to the program uh, and wanted reassurance from me before they came. I exchanged a few emails. And I said, look, we're going to do the best we can to help you. So here she, uh, she and her daughter and this uh, team containing uh, five other people on a white background, extremely professionally photographed. This is online. We probably don't have them have to link it. You can, you can find them in the bill roll and heart disease and diabetes or something. Anyway, <clears throat> so they did this presentation and here's mom down, and this a lot, a lot of weight, uh, on very little insulin, on um, no diabetic pills. Uh, I would just guess, and this is a typical patient. This is not, this is not something, this is not like when you watch Weight Watchers with Jenny Craig and they say, this is the best case example. Do not expect this. Uh, you should expect this. <clears throat> So anyway, she's down in weight. She's feeling phenomenal. She's, uh, I would guess, down from 15 medications to uh, much reduced dose of insulin and one other medication. She got her life back. Uh, and that's available on video and I'll send it to you, Gustavo, so you can link it and it's all public now. Yeah, yes. So that's great. what the 10-day program is about. Uh, <clears throat> do it. We've uh, published on 1,615 people. Uh, I've been doing this for 40 years in a living situation. Uh, it's not that uh, sometimes things don't work out. Uh, not that sometimes my guesses are not correct. Sometimes they're not correct, but not very often. And uh, believe it or not, Gustavo, some people don't follow my advice. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. They're but, worried about those numbers. Aren't they sometimes like the the glucose, and then you tell them to not take uh, it, insulin or something, and they still take it, and they end up on the floor or something. I don't know. Well, those things happen too. Uh, and then when they leave the program, 
everybody's very enthused at the end of 10 days. They think yeah. they found the answer, which, you know, we believe right. too. And then they get back into their regular living situation. Uh, they find things a little more challenging than being locked up with us. Right. And, uh, it may not work out as well, but they, they've always been forever. They have their eyes open. They know. Now they know. And many people come back. Uh, in fact, we encourage you to come back if you'd like two weekends or the 10 day again. And I, I would have to say everybody's better off from the experience. Uh, and I'm talking about the patients and the staff. Uh, I think everybody's better off. Yes. And even though, I mean, the one of the big benefits of going in person is to get the medical care from you and Dr. Lim and ha ask you questions in the private consultations and also to try the food and meet other people. But but, but your whole program, your 10 day program is actually on your website. Uh, it's free. It's, it's actually described as a all 12 day program. Well, all it's, the it's lectures free. are there. Everything's free. Yeah, and I have met people who actually follow the 10-day program from the website. They never attended your the live event, and they had very big uh, success. So it is possible to do it that way. They've had not just a very big success. They've had the exact same results. Right, right. You attend the 10-day program. But yes. I do have to comment, uh, I, I, uh, tax time is coming up. I could prepare my own taxes. I could go to the library, read the laws, spend days uh, uh, figuring out how to prepare my taxes. I could do it myself, but I don't. Uh, I have a CPA who is well-trained. I hand them the problems. Uh, he or she gives me the answers, and I sit back. And that's kind of what we uh, do at the 10-day program. That's right. uh, all the information is free. It's well-organized. There are no gimmicks. Uh, you're welcome to do it yourself. Of course, it always uh, we tell you that uh, you must have proper health care supervision when you're dealing with medications or serious health problems. But then again, for most of us, like me and my taxes and uh, other important issues, uh, I don't have time to uh, to acquire the, uh, the 40 years of experience my accountant has. And you likely don't have time to acquire the the 30 years of experience Dr. Lyle has and the, well, probably 20 years of experience of Dr. Lim and the half a century of experience I have and the half a century of experience Mary has. So we're here to help you. You know, it's, you know, right. it's, it's place to that simple. Dr. Manzullo, someone asked if uh, any part of the program uh, is, could be covered by insurance. Uh, the answer, the, the simple answer is no. Uh, the actual, uh, some people have taken the trouble to get their, some of their part of their program covered, but we don't, we don't deal with insurance companies. Uh, we don't deal with Medicare. There are programs, by the way, that do deal with Medicare, such as uh, Ornish's program or the Pritikin program. They've worked hard to get covered under Medicare. Uh, uh, I've not done that for a whole variety of reasons, including I don't need to have the government uh, Medicare, uh, et cetera, be involved with your personal care. So I've had uh, the luxury, the fortune of not being involved with insurance companies, uh, be they Blue Cross, Aetna, or the U.S. government, or the Canadian government. And uh, my plan is to never change that intrusion. Right, right. I you may know, be wrong. Yeah, I want to mention, Gustavo, uh, uh, the program we run is costly, Compared to what? We, we were on programs for big companies, which, by the way, I encourage you to share what we do with any company that you know, any business you know. And like the last program we ran for CenturyLink, I think there were 120 people in it. And uh, just to give you, uh, this is, a, well, whether it's private or public, I'll just give you a, a statement that I made to the 120 people uh, from this very important tele telecommunications company is that uh, what it costs the telecommunications company, CenturyLink, to send 120 people to our program with all the care from Dr. Lyle, Dr. Lim, and there's seven other physicians who work for me. And the hotel, resort stay, and the food, uh, what, what the cost was for this entire program was less than one heart surgery gone bad 
or even gone, a couple of them gone well. So here I am a company, okay, I'm a business. I'm trying to, you know, balance the books and I'm self-insured or I have to pay some other second party to provide health care for my company. And I'm the guy that writes the check or the gal that writes the check. I'm looking, I'm saying, uh, let's see, shall I spend uh, half, three quarters, a million dollars uh, making my employees well? And by the way, it costs me $2 million to replace one employee. Or should I spend uh, half a million or a million dollars uh, sending my uh, key employee or, or not so key employee? Because believe me, if you are a clerk at Whole Foods or sweep the floors or own Whole Foods or whatever, uh, well, a bypass search would cost the same. So am I going to spend uh, this, uh, say, million dollars on uh, one of my employees uh, who it's not going to work? You read the article we talked about earlier. Uh, am I a, a wise uh, business person? <clears throat> Need I continue? Uh, I, I would. Uh, one of my goals, uh, uh, my present goals, is to get more companies: Ford, General Motors, IBM, Apple, uh, mom and pop store around the corner. To get you to think about your employees, think about well, let's see. If I'm self-insured or second-party insured, they're going to raise my insurance rates if something goes bad with my employees. Am I going to spend my money on uh, on uh, the medical uh, way to approach the problem, which is, like I say, cut, burn, and poison or whatever? Or am I going to spend my money on fixing the problem, which is the food, and then I get to keep this key employee, which will cost me $2 million to replace, and at the same time, I can educate another 119 employees which will cost yeah it's not hard to to figure out what the best answer is for that yeah uh dr mcdougall um i wanted oh you said something i'm sorry i just lost the train of thought but uh, someone here is asking and i'm just going to redirect her because you and i you and i have done about three webinars where you have discussed in detail the topic of ketosis so we're not going to go back to that topic. It's, you, you've covered it in depth. So Rebecca, uh, go back to the uh, website and on the webinars. They're, they're, they've been recently, like last month, I think, and they're they're there. Um, anyways, Dr. McDougall, would you um, let me ans let me ask you this question that someone sent about. Um, uh, lupus says, could you offer some advice for a beginner in tailoring your program for someone with lupus? What are the most important things to focus on? Well, the first thing is to get the education. And, and as you were just saying, how do I find out if there's any real scientifically supported uh, way to deal with the problem? One which I could discuss with my father-in-law my physician, uh, I mean, is there, is there any other approach to the problem of inflammatory, um, serious inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus? And the way you find out, find that out, just hit back to a general subject uh, that you were mentioning, Gustavo, is you go to the website, you look at, uh, there's a box called search, and you put in lupus and, uh, or inflammatory arthritis or whatever. And you find out the various articles that I've written. I could have just as easily told you to go to the May 2014 newsletter, which discusses inflammatory arthritis and gives you a couple notes on lupus. Uh, we may have a, a star McDougal or two uh, discussing lupus. I, I, you'll have to take a look. But lupus is a disease of the Western diet. It is caused by eating the Western diet. I've cared for a lot of patients with lupus. It doesn't respond as quickly as a, something termed rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. It takes a little bit longer, in, in my experience in general, for somebody with lupus to resolve the problems. Like a patient with rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis, in four to seven days, they're already going, well, I've discovered the miracle. Most of them. Uh, and it does happen sometimes that quickly with lupus, but in general, lupus, which is a very, very uh, severe autoimmune disease, 
bothering the kidneys and the skin, all the tissues. Uh, in, in my experience, it takes a little bit longer, and we're talking about, say, four months. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, issues such as uh, gluten-free, which I hate to even mention, uh, are discussed in that May 2014 newsletter or when you get the surgeon. But yeah, if you have lupus, uh, even if you are uh, starting to have kidney disease and heading for a dialysis machine, Yes, a dietary change will make a huge difference again. Or, excuse me, not a, a huge difference in your future. I kind of got, got another thought that came to mind. And when we were talking on Sunday about when you gave me the opportunity to give a lecture, I did have to start the lecture with a statement uh, that we will make America well again. And it's already come up on the website. That statement. Maybe other people have thought about it. But that's our goal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, right now, in uh, in 2017, uh, and you all know what I'm talking about, is we are going to make America well again. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> and oh, way too much. Of it. And you said, Dr. Madugo, you said today, which was um, February 19th. Uh, 2017, we are starting to make America well again. And yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like what I was thinking. We are starting, not, you know, we've started a long time ago. I, I think there are folks, again, I had great communication, I felt, with the audience. And uh, what I said is that uh, February 19, 2017, is the, is the Independence Day. But we will not look back with low carbers. The cheaters, liars, and polluters. The low carvers are done. Those are the people who recommend that you eat everything that walks, flies, or swims. They are finished. Uh, yeah. there, is, there is no turning back. There is no further confusion. We will not tolerate them to even give their opinion again because they've already dominated it, us for the last 20 years. Some of your minds. Uh, we're done with them. We will make America well again. And, and we can. And you know, I think that February of 2017 is the right month to do it. I don't know if you know this. I kind of lost you. Is that, is that showing on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this month has four of everything. It has four Sundays, four Mondays, four Tuesdays, four Wednesday, four of everything. It happens one time in 823 years. So this change is not going to happen until 823 years from now. Amazing, Gustavo. I, I will share that fact with uh, Mary. I was doing math, and that would be... If we went back 100, 823 years, we would be in the year 1,193. And just, I thought it was an interesting trivia. <laughs> that, that'll dominate my thinking the rest of the day. Okay, well, this is the month to make the change and to start it. It's not going to happen until 800 years from now. Good. Okay, so someone was asking about a topic that I hear myself, or I used to more of, uh, which is liver cleanse. Do you think that a person should worry about doing liver cleanses? And if so, what kind? Some people say that you have to take uh, half a cup of oil and drink it, or I mean, some some nonsense like that. Uh, what what do you well, say? This, again, I've been in this business a half a century. And uh, what, what, I, what I hear is something uh, called a gallbladder cleanse. And that's been taught as consuming uh, vinegar and olive oil to clean out the gallstones, a gallbladder cleanse, which may be similar to a liver cleanse, but it's uh, vinegar and olive oil. And if you look on my website, by the way, I wrote an article maybe 15, 20 years ago uh, that looked at this exact subject. This is not a new topic. And what they did is they... Uh, See, people would take this gallbladder cleanse or liver cleanse, and then later on that day or the next day, they'd look in the toilet. 
and they would see these opalescent uh, brown globules that looked like gallstones. They'd go see the gallstones past in the toilet. Well, what researchers did, wouldn't be my preference of a job to do, but what they did is they took these uh, op opalescent uh, uh, circular uh, objects out of the toilet and analyzed them what they were with drops of olive oil. So, uh, but still, the idea of a gallbladder or liver cleanse persists, and people will look in the toilet and they go, oh, they're my gallstones. No, those are just globs of olive oil. Uh, the, way, the way you do cleanse your body, the body is naturally healing all the time. And to make the liver most efficient, you must feed it carbohydrate, sugar. And you say, you know, Dr. McDougal said sugar. Uh, you have to understand what Dr. McDougal means. Sugar means starch like potatoes, rice, corn, and then you most efficiently power the liver. So the body's always trying to cleanse itself. And once you stop poison it, poisoning it with animal foods and oils, then the healing dominates. So yeah, you need to do a cleanse of your liver, your brain, your muscles, your kidneys, and so on. The way you do it is you stop putting poisons in it, and then it naturally cleanses itself. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of expensive supplements you don't have to go to any special uh, offices where they get beans of something to radio, uh, whatever, to make your body extra special in its cleansing and healing ability. This is all, AJ has the right verbiage, but I won't use it. It's all garbage. <laughs> AJ is here today. She's on the, the webinar. Um, well, what you said, Dr. McDougall, is something that comes at least once in my mind every day. Um, because my grandfather, my dad's dad, was a medical doctor. Today I was looking through some stuff and look at this. That's my grandfather's. Uh, oh, wow. He, he oh, had God. this. Yeah. So he had this on the door. He worked in a hospital, but he also had his little, he saw patients in at his home. He had a, um, a, med a room to see patients. And I remember... I was a teenager. He always said what you says, what you say, and it is the body is constantly trying to heal itself. You just have to let it. And he used to say that, and and it, it just it's special to me because you say it, and, and and my grandfather used to say it. And I remember those times when people went to the doctor to the doctor's house. And I remember him walking two or three blocks to the patient's house because he cares so much about the patient to check up and see how they were doing. I, I would treasure that, uh, that sign. But nothing's changed, uh, Gustavo, in a hundred or a thousand years. And again, those physicians and dietitians listening, uh, don't take any of this as a critique. Uh, a, a crit excuse me, take it as a critique, don't take it as a criticism. Uh, I understand uh, that you understand uh, the basic principles of healing, and you also know that we're involved in a business, uh, the medical business, which is should be held accountable. And uh, all of you, if you refer back to what we started talking about maybe 45, 50 minutes ago about the article published that you showed, uh, you know, there's uh, behavior going on in terms of uh, big medicine, big farm and uh, so on is uh, not justifiable and they ought to be held accountable uh, they are being held accountable as we as we just discussed uh, february 19 2017 is, right. a, is a date that you Gustavo and i and aj and many of the doctors uh in that live audience and listening right now we're just not going to look back in terms of being nice politically correct tolerating uh, what uh, um, I uh, kindly refer to as the, uh, the garbage, the nonsense, the lies, liars, polluters, and cheaters. It's, it's, it's over. Yes, and another thing, Dr. McDougall, that I got from your lecture, but I've heard you say this before. As I read comments here, and I see, unfortunately, people that, 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 that they – they just need to listen to some of your lectures and read the, what you say. Um, the research can show you anything you want. Um, 
some, I mean, if it's made in a certain way, because you know, some people are here saying, well, olive oil is healthy. Well, depends on what study you're, you're looking at and what kind of information. Um, and it's frustrating. Well, it, 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 I, I understand what you're saying. Um, you, uh, the, the statement is, is you can prove anything with research, but that's unless you're informed. Like, for uh, example, uh, the car, head of the cotton collaboration, uh, Peter Gassi, who was a friend of mine, uh, he's an extremely intelligent man. And when he reads the research on mammography, he is not fooled. And so he wrote a book, uh, Mammograms, Truth, Lies, and Controversies. He wrote it about six, seven years ago. So he knows how to read the research. And H. Gilbert Welch, who's from Dartmouth College, uh, when he reads the research on mammography or PSA testing, or the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force, or the Canadian Preventive Services Task Force, or uh, so they can't fool uh, people who know how to read the research and understand how they manipulate the methods uh, right. to the to the uh, less informed, or to those of you who want to hear good news about your bad habits. Uh, you can find research to prove anything. Uh, I happen to have the good fortune of being able to understand uh, what what is being said for the for the most part in the science. And when I don't, I go to the letters to the editor and, and get my uh, my better informed colleagues to help me understand what's going on. But the truth is the truth. You you can't change the truth. You can't. Uh, so. Uh, when you say people get confused by research, only if they want to be. And you did a wonderful webinar only on oil that people can see where you present this research. And so I want to encourage anybody here on this webinar that still think or they're new to the webinar and they don't go back and look at it. Um, well, this has been a wonderful time together as usual. Dr. McDougall, we will close it since we are at an hour sure. uh, of transmission. And um, we look forward to seeing you next week. And I do want to announce to people where you are starting a very practical and very wonderful series. And this series is going to be based on this book. Right. So starting next week... Um, Dr. McDougall is going to be discussing one chapter per webinar, sometimes maybe, maybe two, I don't know, and taking questions. And who doesn't, I mean, we all know people who have digestive problems. Maybe some of you have that. Uh, I certainly was one of them. So this book is available on your website, right? And it's also in other places like Amazon. You can buy it at Whole Foods. Unfortunately, the reason I've hesitated to do this series is uh, the other series we've done, like uh, we did uh, one on McDougall's Medicine. I gave you the book for free. Right. It's right. A, a, a worldwide bestseller, and the publisher has every right to, uh, you know, to their share of the book. But uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can borrow it from the library. But we're going to discuss that. And when you say uh, people who have bowel problems, well, I I'm a general doctor. I used to be a family practitioner, I can tell you, when you get to talk to people, and you really sit there and talk to the patient, you talk to people about their bowels, which I know is not your favorite subject, but uh, everybody eating the wrong food has bowel problems because you can't take the intestinal tract uh, for human beings, which is designed to live on primary starch, rice, corn, and potatoes. Uh, you can't make it work right if you feed it foods designed for a cat or a dog. Uh, it just doesn't work, just like you can't take a, a cat. And, uh, we're talking about a, a designed carnivore, a cat, or, or a lion, a, a house pet cat. You can't take a cat and somehow make its intestinal tract, which is perfectly designed for the cat, function on potatoes or corn or rice. It, we can start with that simplicity and we'll move on with the details uh, with, with those yeah. lectures. 
I know that you, you, you're not in this webinar series because you want to sell the book. I mean, it's, we want, you want to do it because it's a wonderful uh, topic. And like you said, you would probably give it for free like you did the other book if you had it. My guess is it's a $12 investment or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, totally. But uh, uh, again, my guess is if you decide to purchase the book, it'll be, you'll say, oh, it's, it's for the best few cents that I ever spent. Who knows? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Next not, week, we're going to do. Uh... Don't bother telling <laughs> Exactly. Uh, the chapter for next week is chapter four, which is called My Stomach's on Fire, and I can't put it out. So, so let, let me give you an option for those of you who are in places where you can't get the book. Is, uh, okay. The uh, writings for that book are free, and they are on my website. They are uh, in my 2002 two zeros newsletters, which are free on the website. And so for the whole 12 months of 2002, I wrote the chapters, the basic chapters of that book. However, to present it so people could read it, I had the uh, great opportunity to get involved with uh, Howard Bartner, who did the illustrations for the book. He was the head of uh, medical illustrations for the National Institutes of Health. So he did all the illustrations. And I also brought a comedy writer in because it's uh, the balls are a, uh, a dark, shameful topic. And uh, many people have told me that they, this is a book that they sat down, they read from cover to cover. And uh, I do understand that. But it, it took a team of people to get you to read about the balls from the lips to the other end with enjoyment. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity to give us your time during your vacation. And uh, it's very appreciated, very much appreciated. I enjoyed it very much. I hope I look relaxed and uh, I'm having fun. So. <laughs> While the rest of us have to go back to work. So I but, to, not have to. I get to go to work next Friday. That's right. You get to go to work. All right. Well, thank you again. And thank you for joining in, and we will see you all next week for another week with Dr. McGlue. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. McGlue. Thank you, good stuff.